Hello there, my name's Peter and I'm trying to find a way in which the flood of Noah occurred on the con continents and the deep sea basins as well. <coughs> we have a, a comet moon passing by close to the Earth. The Earth fractures into radial wedges. Friction-free oscillations begin in a radial direction, like here. Molten magma begins to flow outwards through the wedge boundaries, creating the mid-ocean ridges. The magma flows and the ocean flows over the top of it, pushing the magma away from the boundary. So the tidal difference d is an acceleration given by this equation where re over 3 is the centre of the mantle where this dot is. So s, the displacement, is equal to the radius of the earth plus a half d tau squared where tau is the residence time, t equals r theta, this distance divided by the velocity. When RC equals KRE, you get this equation here for the for the acceleration towards the comet. So S for K equals one, we get S equals 1.8 kilometers. K equals two, we get 1.5 kilometers. Uh, K equals 4, you get 1.3 kilometres. This is for MC equals ME times 0 0.015, which is one of the masses of the moons of Jupiter. For K equals 1, we have S equals the radius of the Earth plus 1.8 kilometres cos omega t. Uh, so this goes from RE plus 1846 down to RE minus 1846. So it's an oscillating, an oscillating function where the period of the motion is 2 pi root h over g, where h is the depth of the mantle and g is the the where g is the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the earth. So this is a wee interlude. S equals re plus a half d t tau squared. After t seconds the comet is gone, but the motion keeps on increasing to twice the difference. And then it goes into fr friction-free oscillation, partially sinusoidal. So each wedge has an equation. The displacement equals radius of the earth plus AI cos omega t plus a f phase angle. As the comet passes, the crust and mantle fracture into radial wedges, assuming the mantle is plastic. There then follows friction-free oscillations of each wedge. Omega here is common to all wedges, although they differ by small amounts. So, The oscillation energy of each wedge is shared around the globe by wobble interaction. The magma is forced upwards to the crust by a pumping action, so the, the, the boundary, the, the wedge it goes out and it sucks up this magma in the, in the gap. When it forces itself down, the magma gets forced up to, to the, the seabed. Likewise, you get sideways compression. Uh, when when the 
when the compresses from both sides it ejects the magma as well. If instead of MC equals 0 0.015 ME, try MC equals 0 0.025 ME and K equals 1, we get A equals 3 kilometres. So your, your uh, equation is S equals radius of the earth plus 3 kilometres sine omega T. So the difference is 6 kilometres which is a big big height, nearly the height of Everest. When we realise that delta is only experienced by some of the wedges, the mean value is about delta over 3 equals 2 kilometres, which energy is shared around the globe by wobble interaction. What happened to the comet moon? It could have collided with an early planet creating the asteroid belt between Mars and Earth. It could have been captured as one of the four major moons of Jupiter. It could have left the solar system to be part of the Oort cloud. So there's options there. Ocean flows. When each adjacent wedge rises by 2 km, the ocean is lifted by 2 km. This will flow to lower heights which flows are then lifted up by adjacent wedges and so the oceans flow to and fro backwards and forwards up and up and over the continental land masses. This could be the way the ocean flood occurred in the days of Noah which you can find out about if you read your Bible in the book of Genesis. It's uh, It's an account of Noah and the flood and the ark and the animals. So read up, read up in it and it should be quite good. Okay then. Thank you.